All right then, let's keep a bit of a tradition going. Right now, as I said in the intro, this is getting to be, become a bit of a tradition that I do a giant snowman every year, but I try and do something different with them all the time. This one is going to be tiger wood, but what's different about this is it's cross grain. Uh, what this actually is, if you've seen the video where I did the big end grain tiger wood bowl, this is one of the off cuts from it, right? Uh, it should end up pretty nice uh, as I said I like doing these things um, but uh, I said we'll get on with it so first thing I'm going to do is round it off put it in a chuck of course right and we'll get on with it then uh, as I said this one is cross grain so I haven't done a cross grain one of these before so it should end up quite interesting now this is off balance there's a lump missing there bit missing there so I gotta round it down first right and uh, put a ten on it probably this end right so we'll get going with that and <coughs> see where this one leads us Right now, we're set up, ready to go. She's rounded off. Uh, so, let's go with the measurements. And so, if we go. Head. Segment. Segment. Base. Now, we'll separate them out. So they were down the size. Start taking this head down to size. Start getting some shape into it. With the head forced. on this and then can you on the head Head might still be a little big, so I'm gonna take it down a bit more. Have a look on the 
proportion to when it's the shape of fun. down a little bit in size. As I said now we'll get uh, the rough shape in before it do anything. Right then, that head is still way too big compared to the next one down. So it needs to come down a bit. Something like this has a shape to it. The best thing you can do is to do it roughly first and then refine the shape. Because it's easier for your eye to see any problems that are there when you have the rough shape that you're looking for. Like there is a bit. 
off. That's better. Right, I need to talk in there a little bit more. Sorry, it won't camera. Yeah, that's okay. Right, now I need to finish up top of this head. Very carefully because the a lot of this is between that chuck and there. That's one of the reasons I use the bigger chuck. Is to try and reduce the... Uh, or to give it more of a... More of a surface because of the leverage that's on this. Bump out of that. A bit of a bump at the top. Get rid of. There we go. Alright then. I will sound to put a finish on and be right back for the next bit. So I'll see you in a sec. Right then, just buffing the wax off. Uh, this turned out quite nice. It's a lovely piece of wood actually. There's not much dark striping in it. I think most of the dark striping went into that um, ground bowl. And of course, with it being in the wrong orientation, um, an awful lot of the striping just is hidden. But it's very pretty. Now, if you're doing these, I, I went into this when I did the um, Impulse Boy Snowman video, right, uh, if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link below and a link up there, right, uh, don't get obsessed with making the segments all perfect s spheres, because if you ever look at a real snowman, they're never perfect spheres, right, and you can waste so much time making sure that everything is a perfect sphere, that you... The pleasure of doing them kind of goes away because you're more worried about it. As I said, this is a really pretty piece of wood. There is some black striping in it. There's a nice flash there. Love that natural cracking there. Another nice flash there. We're back around. Now I'll just part this off and uh, I'll set up for doing the hat. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Right. In the lathe for the hat, I have a piece of really pale Dominga. You can see the typical Dominga sway, it's got a wavy marks in it. Um, it's about three and a half by four and a half. Right, so we round it off and we get going on this hat. I'm just checking that it will fit inside my jaws. It will. Right then, flatten off the base for it. Right, put the tenon on. Smaller jaws this time. Now we're still in the chuck. So we'll take it around for the chuck. Right. 
we'll in for the rim of the hat. Put in the scoop. The hat. I like these to be kind of very wide on top. I'm doing these joints now, man. Notice there, I'm deliberately leaving like a bump in there. I put a bump into there because, in my head, anyway, hats on snowmen are not supposed to be new hats, they're supposed to have little flaws and stuff in them. So, get rid of this. We start hollowing for his head. snowman and just check see that's not way not deep enough see the way it's sticking out you need the whole rim here to be touching that snowman's head so this one is just try it and keep going and she came out the <clears throat> no let me, let me pull it back on and I'm going to leave that bit in the video because, as I keep saying, it's important. See there? Some little bits came off the tenant. It's important, especially for new corners, that they see that stuff can happen. So I'm going to deliberately leave that bit in the video. I was just trying to take too big of a bite there, that's what happened. It's going to be a pretty hat. straighten that Deep enough still. Another little bit. Now this is the most important part of this whole thing is to make sure that this hat fits right. your shoulder that and this bit can be a little bit fiddly you get it right but it's worth fiddling around with it so that it's perfect sorry about the camera there I like this hat slightly off to the side. Very, very slight. As I said, it's worth fiddling around the face to get this right.
yeah, that looks good to me. It's sitting in there nicely and it's touching all the way. Grant, right. Now I've got a finish cut on this hat rim. That's a terrible cut. Yeah, that's better. Right, now I'm going to sand and finish this section of the hat and then we flip it over. So I'll be back when I do that. Right, then just buffing the wax off. The swears on this piece of, piece of a finger are really nice. Now, something you will see is I have put no finish or anything inside there. I've said this in the last few videos, I think. I'm going to be gluing there, so I don't want anything in between the two gluing surfaces. Like when I'm gluing this hat to his head, I'll actually sand off the finish where this hat touches so that it doesn't actually uh, interfere with the glue. Isn't that, I love those swirls that are in Babinga. They're absolutely gorgeous. See, there the way the, the grain just waves all over the place. It's gorgeous. Right then, I'll flip this over. And we get the top done. Right. I need to switch jaws to the big set. So, kitchen towel in there to make very sure that the truck jaws don't damage that rim. Oh, excuse me. Right, bring up the tile stuck for the start of this. It's running pretty true. But again, I'm holding the rim of a hat here. I don't want to over tighten it because even with this stuff there, that could mark. Now I'm going to take this down a bit for us. I know that there's a slight chink on the corner of this somewhere. It's just there, so I want that out of it. Let's see if it's gone. It is. Now all I basically want to do is dish the top of the hat slightly. Get as much of it with the tail stuck in place as I can. Get a finish cut. Start taking my little soap. Get a smaller gouge so we can go in there more. stuck away and very very gently hoping that this doesn't come flying take that last bit out of it pressure going in that way if I try and cut this sideways this is gonna come flying Last cut, very very gently, 
to just get that scoop in there, right? There's a bump just there. There we go. Yeah, right. Now, I'll sand and finish that bit and I'll be right back. Alright, just broken the wax off the last piece of hat. There we have it. Some nice flashes and that. Alright, take this off. And then we get to the last two little bits, which is the nose and the pipe. So I'll settle for them back in a sec. Alright then, for the nose, I have a little piece of U in the blade. I use U on the large snowman basically because it's orange. And I just need to get closer to that. I like to use you on these because it's orange. Bring it down to size fourth. The tail sucks apart. Well, the parenting tool, I just take this down. Tail up now. Get the shape into this carrot. I've got a finer gouge. Start the hype for that gouge. Find the shape a little bit. in the face. Pull that under. Down to there. Right. Quick sanding. A finish. And that's that done. Let's grab a bit of 180. Quick clean with mats. 
as I said in the finishing video, everything I do gets the same treatment, finish wise. The advantage of something small like this is it's really very quick to do it all. Sanding sailor. Everything dries in seconds or something this small. Yorkshire grit. Machine, hold loss, as normal. Give it a few seconds. Uh, it'll only take a few seconds to dry because, as I said, this is so small. Everything is really quick on it. Buff it. Check it's not sticking. One finger. Now it's not sliding nicely. back now that little tenon is going to be a gluing surface so I want to take any finish off of it obviously and I also want to make sure it's straight right and grab the little saw and cut that off and there is the nose right, there is the nose tool the rest of them. Right. Save that piece of you for the next nose. Then we get on with the pipe, which is a piece of beach. Round that off quickly. Switch gouges. Tile stock out of the way. Get the stem of the pipe done. Yep, that's thin enough. No, it's not the end there, isn't it? Now it is. Right. Now I'm just going to sand this. I'm not going to put a finish on it. 
because it's getting painted black. Hit it with some 80 glue just to make sure it's perfectly straight. And with this with the channel nose, uh, me and Delicate don't get on because of the way my hands are. Right, that's not long enough. I need to make it slightly longer. The easiest way of doing that is parting tool there. Then I have a tiny little bush over here. Right, this is the paint that I use on the hats of the normal snowman. Has been open since last year. So whatever thing you try and open it. There we go, got it. Right, and I'll cut that off before I paint it because uh, it's easier. mixing I think because that is not right I got these knives for actually doing resin uh, I used to use tongue depressors but these are around about the same size and I bought a bag of I think it was 40 of them in the two euro store for two euro. So they're a hell of a lot cheaper than home tongue depressors. Something you might want to keep an eye out for if you do resin. <coughs> right then. I'll just wait till that end dries. This is enamel paint, so it only takes like a couple of minutes to dry. And I can paint the other end of it. And just stick that over there for a second. I just need to turn the. Uh, what is it they call it on a pipe? Is it a bulb? Is it a bulb on a pipe? I don't know. Simple shape. Hard it down, sand it. Don't need to do anything good on that because it's not thin. See the little lump I've left there on the end? Just 
to make it more pointy shape. But not the camera's picking it up, it's very small. Now we just cut that off, paint it, well actually it would probably be easier to paint that on there, wouldn't it? Paint this on here, be easier. I can never remember between one year and the next the way I do stuff. It's uh, to do with the Lyme disease, my memory is basically gone. Uh, so I have everything written down here, as in sizes of blanks and stuff. I have it all written down in here on the back of one of the things that I use to cover the uh, shelves when I'm turning. Right now, let's spin that away there, let it dry, right, and I can start with assembling this. Now, all I'll do is I'll assemble all this, I'll assemble this guy and then I'll be back to show you the finished product. The only thing you need to know is that here, on the side of his head, where I'm going to attach the hat, it's going to be like that. I'm going to sand off the finish so that the glue has a perfect place to stick. Right? And I have to finish his base as well. So I'll do all that and I'll be back in a minute. Right now, there we have them. As I said, this is becoming a bit of a tradition that I do one of these every year. Um, the body is, and this one is tiger wood. There's not a lot of striping in it because of where it was on the tree, but there's some lovely flash in it. Uh, hat is a very light babinga. His nose is you, and his pipe is painted beach. Uh, questions that I normally get asked on this: What do I use as buttons? Right. For his buttons, I use these. They're Suki 15 millimeter. Um, oh, they're upholstery tacks, right? And they've got these little bumpies on them. Like kind of a honeycomb effect. His eyes are, they're, uh, I think they're 18 mil, but they're for the bottom of like chairs and stuff, so that they don't scratch floors. Uh, and as I said, oh, these things are really popular. This one's already gone to a lady who, uh, for the last two years, has got one. She has three sons, and she wants a snowman for each son, kind of thing. Um, so this one's already gone. I have another piece of wood like this, so I'll make another one of these, and it'll be on the stall. And I have a load of wood. Up. I have a load of other blanks around that I'll make a load of these because, as I said, they normally go. Uh, this one's already gone. So if you enjoyed that or got nothing out of it, if you wouldn't mind clicking like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one.